Hey everyone, Don over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're going to be working on a pair of BMW riding boots. Let's see what's inside of them. I'm kind of very curious. I haven't uh, haven't done a full resole on these kinds yet. I've done other repairs, but haven't had a chance to really, really tear into them. So let's see what's going on underneath. Join us and check it out. All right, everyone, so thank you for joining us. And like I said, we're going to be working on these BMW boots. We're going to be resoling them, putting on a new welt because the uh, existing welt, which is kind of more of a decorative type of welt, is done for right there. And I can already kind of predict what's going on with these boots. Um, they seem like a simple build, but I'm still very curious to really see what's underneath it. They don't look like they're even Blake stitched or anything. Sure enough, that is the case. See, they're just glued on, no stitching. But that's all right. We're gonna take care of them because these had a midsole on them originally, and we're gonna be putting a midsole on as well. This is the Vibram sole that we're gonna be putting on them today. I'll have to give you guys the name of it and everything a little bit later. I don't have the name written down anywhere, but uh, it'll be in the description anyways, as well as the title. So. But we are going to put a new welt on there and then stitch on a midsole. We'll do a Blake stitch build on that and then we'll be able to put the sole on there. I was very curious to see what was really going on underneath here. And these things are just wanting to fall apart. Look at that. It just wants to fall apart all over the place. I guess I'll have to use a little bit of this to loosen up the glue. And for the back of the heel, hang on, let me pull up this side real quick. Now for the back of the heel, in order for me to be able to get a good grip, there's two options I could always do. I could either cut off the heel, or in my case, I like to use these here. Uh, let's see, some adjust adjustable pliers. If I can get a good enough grip on them. Operate. Come on. Man, these things are really finicky. Let's try on this end that we're already working on. There we go. Popped right off. Look at that. I don't really need that too much, but uh, I like to hang on to soles just in case. So this spot here that just popped out, that's just the insole there. Now the insole on these is just leather insole. I wonder if I'll be able to show you guys on the inside. It's just like that. Hopefully the camera's able to show it at least somewhat. And that's what this is right here. So from the look of it, Yep, there is a shank. It's a small shank. It looks like it starts about here and goes up to there. And it's right underneath here. It doesn't feel like it's broken, thankfully. So, if it was broken, I'd have to try to dig it out or something and get it all cleaned out. But, pull out some of this stuff. Okay. Get some glue back in here. Gluing down part of this here is kind of important because that is the upper of the boot that's tucked in obviously under. And so 
we don't want it to be shifting around too much and while we still have the indentations left over on the leather footbed that gives me kind of a guide to be able to follow so that later on once i'm getting everything attached to it causes a little less problems for me and as i mentioned since we're going to be replacing the welt on here the welt that we're going to be putting on is very similar it's going to be a decorative one in other words and it helps also give us a guide to work off of as well when we are trimming out the sole and everything let's see get a little bit under here now again like i said it's kind of a decorative welt technically but it'll give us a guide I'll show you here real quick. You can see that's what this is here. It's got these little ridges just like that there, and it just gets glued on in place. Now there are two methods of doing it. I can either remove the welt off of here, trace this off to the mid, trace this onto the midsole, and glue this direct the welt directly to the midsole. But I prefer gluing the welt to the boot directly because there's still a nice fine pattern right here that you can see around the edges and uh, that gives me a good guideline to work off of and everything and makes it a little more even in other words as well but there's a few different techniques of being able to do it so this guy i'm all done with set that aside let it dry for a little while and then press it all together afterwards i'm going to run to the sander so I can sand that up and get that old glue and gunk out of here. Um, and then I'll hit it on the steel brush just a little bit to clean it off just some more. So that we have a good, nice, clean surface area to start with. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, everyone. So I've got the first welt on. Uh, just to kind of give an idea. I had to get these going and stuff and run home and everything. Unfortunately, I couldn't continue on with them on the same day too much. But... So the new welt is on this one. Let me grab the mate here. Kind of gives you some perspective of what's going on. So these are obviously just glued on and everything. It usually starts out here and then there's that little split there. From the bottom you can see it a little bit. But that's kind of what has to be done with these because it is after all, like I mentioned, a decorative welt. All right, sorry, I keep getting interrupted. But uh, anyway, so this is the welt there. You can see, oops. You can see that it's a smooth finish here. Sometimes they have a little bit of a stitch or maybe a rib pattern, but we've gone ahead and gone with the smooth one for this one here. And then you can see these little teeth. So this is all glued up here. This is the part that gets glued down. And um, it, we just followed the line of the original one that was on there. It gets a little trickier and harder when we actually don't have a line to follow. But thankfully this one's got a nice, nice line to follow on it. Now, most everything with an adhesive, we usually heat up. However, this I don't heat up just because it requires sometimes readjustments or something. So I have to pull it off and, and the heat makes it a lot stickier and it kind of more almost like a permanent bond in other words. So that's why we leave it off. Plus, once we start adhering the uh, soles or midsoles onto the shoe, uh, the heat transfer from the sole after it's been hot does what it needs to to get this to stick a little bit more on the permanent side, in other words. And we also try to stick it when the adhesive is still at least a little bit tacky as well. Not wet, obviously, but just just sticky enough. It doesn't always work out well. Uh, also when it's on the jack stand like it just was.
Okay, see, I always like to cut the welts just a little bit longer here like that. And that way we have a little extra just in case because I've seen it way too many times where it's just too short and it doesn't turn out pretty. There's my knife. And I've got one of these knives here. These are the Japanese cobblers love these things and I like it too now. Comes in handy a lot of times. But I lock this up. Use a random scrap of leather. And use this to mark it real quick where I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And now and just lost a spot I just marked. Like disappeared. There it is. There we go. Slice it, slices it off nice and clean. So uh, the seam here is as tight as possible. There we go. So obviously you can still see it there, but once the midsole's on there, everything kind of lines up nicely. Go ahead and hammer this all down. At this stage now, what I can do is uh, take it over to the sander, get it cleaned up the rest of the way because the midsole that they used from the factory is kind of like a foam. You can see there's a chunk still here that uh, it just was not wanting to come off. It ripped off the midsole. And uh, yeah, we'll get that all cleaned up, rough up the leather a little bit more, even though it's nice and fresh, kind of want it more roughed up and start gluing up the midsoles as well. So let's continue on. All right, everyone. So we're over at our Blake stitch machine in our industry. We call it a McKay machine. Um, this machine will stitch clear through. I've gone ahead and put on the midsole off camera because it got hot really fast and I had to get it taken care of quickly. I thought my camera was recording before, but I guess it uh, stopped recording or something out of the blue on me. This thing's been acting up on me. It's annoying. But um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and stitch this Blake stitch style. It's going to go clear through from the outside inside here. Here. obviously the insole in here is what the foot ends up sitting on and everything but uh, we're trying to make this structurally a durable boot so after we stitch it we're gonna go ahead and put a thin leather midsole in or insole in there so it doesn't uh, you know affect the fit of the boot and that way it also covers up the stitches for the person wearing them so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this I already sprayed it down I did also do a very light channeling you won't be able to see it on camera too easily most likely but I can at least see it I have to double check on my camera every once in a while to see if it's actually recording still but let me go ahead and get this started up Man, this thing has just been giving me a, a headache. Come on. Okay. Ah, timing seems to be off just a little bit on here. See, it's always a pain with this thing, especially because earlier I was stitching something very thick. Now I'm going to something very thin. So it's like a huge change, in other words, for this thing. That was a tough one there. I actually got to stitch all the way around. Usually, again, a Blake stitch shoe, they only get stitched around the ball of the foot area. So like from here all the way around to here, sometimes right underneath where the heel base would be. So like up to here and forward, in other words, but stitching on the back end of the heel, 
that is not something that's usually done um so a number of cobblers are going to be like you're stupid why would you go through all that well i'm going to go through all of it because i can i manage to do it somehow sometimes not always i don't always get lucky with that but every now and then it works out so got this one taken care of i'm gonna leave this little nub here sticking out because i'm gonna glue that down and make sure it's nice and secure and doesn't end up getting pulled uh it's gonna get glue on it anyways all around now as you can see the stitches just kind of sit over top they don't really go down inside of a channel because midsoles are very thin whether it's a leather or a rubber it's fairly thin but i'm gonna go ahead and get the other one taken care of get things glued up and stuff clean this off because there is a uh, lubricant here that goes in with the thread so that the thread doesn't rip on us and the lubricant uh, has got a bit of an oil in it so i gotta make sure that's all cleaned off as well i'll just use like an acetone on there or a tolling on it and uh same thing with the soles because the oils off the hands that come off they get onto that sole as well but let me take care of the other one get it glued up and uh we'll continue on all right everyone so it's time to stick the sole on got it out of the oven the other boot i've already got stuck on because it's the end of the day and i want to make sure this thing cures overnight very well let's see make sure everything's all nice on here there we go and yes i got craziness going on back here yeah, you can see all these clamps and stuff like that this is a weird boot that i'm working on with, that has a brace attachment on it as well so there's a lot going on on that boot there but thankfully this one's a little bit on the easier side versus what what that one has and i have to let it sit there steadily without moving it otherwise it's all those clips just pop right off and everything all right now i'm gonna go ahead and run this over to the press let you guys check out what that looks like real quick you can see it's nice and tight here now obviously there's quite a bit sticking out of the toe here but that's in order to make sure that the width and everything fits the boot nicely so let's transition over to the press all right so we're over at the press now first we're going to do the heel we got one of these guys here this does the heel for us and this allows any kind of bubbles to escape when we do a section at a time so i start at the heel and then move my way up to the front of the shoe so any bubbles they slowly move their way up obviously the hammering doesn't do too much but it at least gets things going so i can hammer out the center of the sole and everything so any bubbles can escape through the sides still and through the back and the front but there we go got that pressed out and because it's still hot this will adhere and bond pretty quickly because the adhesive is tacky it doesn't need it it doesn't need to sit on there for too long or anything on there and I use that wedge piece for certain areas like right under the arch area where the transition of the heel goes down to the flatter part or the thinner part of the sole there we go all right now I'm gonna go ahead and do the welt press right now um, well I guess I could probably switch the camera around let me switch it around and uh, get the welt press uh, sh to show you guys real quick what that looks like. That's what the camera's hanging off of at the moment. All right, everyone. So you're looking at the back view of our five and one here. Uh, this is uh, what we use for pressing down the welt areas, skiving leather, got the cutter here and everything. Usually I get it from the opposite angle, a little bit from the side or the front, but let's see what it looks like from the back for you guys. Hopefully this view is good, but we stick that under. There's this little wheel here this just spins freely right there this presses on the top of the welt and then this wheel right here or drum it's what moves around back and forth see right there like that so let's go ahead and get the welt under here it presses down this spring right here is kind of the tension of it it pulls on it just enough so it doesn't crush anything you can hear the little one back there but uh yeah just does that usually you can't do the heel bases like i am right now or any heel areas just because they're so thick but thankfully mine actually fits pretty all right around it so there we go just gonna press this heel out one last time real quick 
and uh, then I'm gonna let this sit and cure overnight and then tomorrow I'll go ahead and trim it up a lot of rubbers I don't like cutting off the extra here quite yet I like to let it cure otherwise rubber has a tendency to stretch leather I can do it right after doing the welt press majority of the time but with the rubber it's a different story just because again it's rubber and it has a tendency to stretch some and so it might pull apart so I'm gonna stick this on the press for a few seconds and then uh, yeah I'll be back in here tomorrow to continue on for you guys just a couple of seconds so we'll see you back in a few So I've gone ahead and uh, taken care of the rest of it off video, trimming it out and stuff. You guys saw that, but the edging, give it a polish, put some new, if I can open this up, leather insoles inside there. And that way it'll cover the stitches and everything, especially because these didn't have the leather insole covering it before. So in other words, these boots have gotten a pretty good upgrade, getting that midsole stitched on when before it was just all glued on and everything but at this stage we're all done so if you have any questions or comments leave them down below preferably shorter questions or comments if they're a longer more detailed question that you may have send us a message on instagram at cobblers plus co or on facebook cobblers plus otherwise give us a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next time